you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before listening on. Perhaps we can draw a simple picture that represents the concept of this question. So here we've drawn a very simple picture of a metal surface and this surface we can imagine is made up of sodium, cesium, copper, and iron atoms. And because they are atoms, they each are composed of protons and electrons. So we can perhaps dash a few electrons around each atom. And then what's going on here is we are shining some light onto this metal surface. And we can represent that light with a little wave here. And that light has a certain amount of energy. And in order for that energy to dislodge one of these electrons, it has to be greater than something called a work function. So in order, again, to dislodge electrons, the energy of this incident light ray has to be greater than a work function. The work function we can symbolize using this Greek letter right here. Now, of course, the converse is also true. That is, if the energy is less than the work function of each atom, then an electron will not be emitted. And so this is the key idea that we need to refer to when solving the question. Now, the work functions of each of the four atoms are given to us. What we have to do is calculate the amount of energy that's incident on this metal surface. Now, of course, the energy of an incident photon is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength of that incident radiation. Now, of course, the question does not give us a specific value for the wavelength of this visible light, but we can look at the spectrum of visible light and determine an appropriate value. Let's go ahead and do that. So here is a spectrum for visible light, and we can see at one extreme we have 700 nanometers of wavelength, and then at the opposite extreme we have 400 nanometers. And it turns out that at this end, even though it's the smallest wavelength, we actually have the highest energy. And so what we're going to do is use the wavelength that corresponds to the highest energy of visible light. So we'll end up using 400 nanometers. We're using the highest energy because we want to make it as likely as possible to emit these electrons while still staying within the visible light spectrum. So that's why we're choosing this end of the spectrum as opposed to the other end. We'll go ahead and plug in 400 nanometers in for the wavelength and then the speed of light and Planck's constant are both constants. Notice that we converted the nanometers into meters by multiplying it by 10 to the minus 9 because the standard unit of wavelength has to be in meters. When we punch this into our calculators, we get roughly 4.97 times 10 to the minus 19, and then the standard unit of energy will be in joules. Now, the work functions are given in electron volts, so we want to convert this energy into electron volts to make it easy to compare. And it turns out that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th joules. So the joules will cancel. We can punch that into our calculators. And we get about 3.11 electron volts. So this is the maximum amount of visible light energy that we can shine on the metal surface. Remember the concept that if this energy is less than the work function, then an electron will not be emitted. Let's look at the work functions. Maybe we can write them out over here. So we have sodium, cesium, copper, and iron. And so now we can compare this energy with those four work functions. And we can see that this 3.11 electron volts is less than the work function for copper, and it's less than the work function for iron. And for those two metals, copper and iron, their electrons will not be emitted when visible light shines on it. So the correct answer will be the copper and the iron.